Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. I'm Tracy. I'm Carol. And we are my Outlander Purgatory. <laughs> Carol, how are you this fine Saturday evening? I'm drinking out of a Dixie cup. That's how I am. <laughs> Nice. What are How you? How are you, Tracy? I, I'm good. I am I am fantastic. Hoodie season has begun. Um the last day in my office was Wednesday, I think. So I am you can't really see it, but surrounded by like my work computer and work stuff and work this and oh, it's just a big mess. Working remotely is awesome. You're gonna love it. I am working remotely. So far so good. You're going to love it. I'm telling you right now, I miss doing that. Yes. I will be doing that again at some point. Um, Carol, what are you drinking on this fine evening? Funny you should ask because I've poured it a couple times. <laughs> it's just yes. Carol and I, you guys have been like, we've been chatting for a while before we've, before we've opened the, um, the, the conversation to y'all. So yeah, it's called Pandora's. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's my, my sort of like my resolution for app for next season is to like have you drink different things. We need to yeah. have you like Oh, I love it. I love it so much. Um, oh, it's just so it's just so nice when it when it touches when it touches your lips. <laughs> All I hear is Will Farrell. <laughs> you guys, if you've ever seen um uh oh god, I'm now I was gonna say road trip, it's not road trip. Um what's it called? Anchorman. No. Um no. Blades of Glory. No, where he's um, uh, Luke Wilson um, gets the house on campus. Oh, uh, 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 old school. Old school. Old school. Okay, when Will Ferrell, when when he's like, got a nice little Saturday plan. We're gonna like hit Lowe's, Home Depot, whatever he says, Bed Bath and Beyond, and then they're like, just do this one beer bong. Oh, I can't. I've and the next thing I was like, oh, oh, I'm I'm so <laughs> oh well, I'm shaking it up a little. My week. I pulled I, um, it up for For whatever reason, like I don't when we do videos, well now it's I don't know I don't know what that goes to, but <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I can't stand the mess. When we do videos on the earlier side, and it's almost six o'clock right now, so it's not that early, but I don't really like I like afternoon videos are more like I gotta have like beer or something like that. So I'm having this lovely Bellhaven twisted thistle. IPA, um, right off the boat from Scotland. I also thought it was very appropriate to drink this slante, 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 Carol, slantra, slantra. I thought it was very appropriate to drink the Scottish beer, given um, the little announcement that we have for you guys. The Scots beer to go with the Scots announcement. The Scots announcement. So last week we alluded to um, some very exciting news that we had gotten and confirmed. And April 25th, 2020 was a very important date in all of this. And we actually had some great, 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 hilarious guesses. I think my favorite guess was you guys are opening a winery. <laughs> Which don't discount that. God bless whoever it was who guessed that. That was just Mop so wine. friggin' funny. Tracy, we already have the tagline, Mop Wine gets the job done. Gets the job done. Um, <laughs> yeah, we, we're going to have to like do some sort of special bottling. We'll work on that. That'll be a drought lander project. Um, somebody was like, oh, it's your big date with Sam. Pretty. That's pretty good. That's a pretty good. I, I like that guess. You know, take that. I wish. Um, I wish. I know. Somebody was like, you're going to be extras in, you know, an Outlander episode. Also a very good guess. I wish. Um, but we actually did have one person that guessed and another person who who was really smart and Googled. Um, and we have DM'd both of them on Twitter. So check your Twitter DMs. But we can reveal the big announcement, the big confirmation. Carol, would you like to do the honors? I would. We're going to Scotland. <laughs> and that's not all, you guys. Y'all are coming with us. We are announcing today 
the My Outlander Purgatory Tour of Scotland. It's going to take place from April 25th to May 3rd, 2020. 2020. So, so you have plenty of time to count your pennies. Yup. You have plenty of time to plan. You have plenty of time to get somebody to watch the kids. Yup. There All is like, stuff. it's so convenient for you guys. 16 months, 16 months to like get your, your, you know, stuff in order. If you don't have a passport, get your passport. Um, so let's tell, let me just tell you a little bit about like what's happening here. So we have teamed up with a really amazing company called Creative Adventures Tours. Um, the woman who runs it or uh, one of the people who runs it, her, the woman's name is Lisa and she has been an Outlander fan for 20 years. Uh, longer than us. Quite longer frankly. than us. Well, Although I think, stuff. Carol, I think, isn't 2019 10 years since we read Outlander? Um, 2009, November 2019 will be 10 years yes. I started so my boy, Outlander. We're going to have to do something for that too. 10 years since Tracy forced me to read these amazing books and I started the blog. Yep. Um, but anyway, so Creative Adventures does a lot of stuff with. Um, the thing that they like to do, they well, they do a lot of stuff with like the beating world, um, and they they take they find people who are pretty you know known in in whatever little niche that they're known in, and they are along on the tour to help lead the tour um, and just kind of get people excited about going to whatever specific place for that specific niche um, they're doing. Right. So she's been an Outlander fan for 20 years. She's wanted to do an Outlander <laughs> tour for 20 years. She kind of stumbled upon us, and she's like, them. They're the ones. They're the ones that are going to, like, make an Outlander tour of Scotland hilariously, awesomely, epically fun. <laughs> you know, and I mean, that's pretty... That's I don't know why. <laughs> I know, I can't imagine why either. <laughs> What? Us fun? Really? So, and that's kind of the genesis of it. So we've been working on this for a little while now. Um, the tour is set in stone, and we are so, 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 so freaking excited about this, yes. you guys. Yes, and let me jump in there, Tracy. Please because do. you guys, I, I have not vlogged yet about it, but God willing, I will when I get a few minutes to be able to sit down and do it. I went... <clears throat> with Mop Tom and my kids this summer and it was magical. And the fact that we're going back to some of these places makes me so excited. I don't know what to do with myself. You're talking Edinburgh. I mean, Edinburgh. Carol, would you like to hear the, the actual places where we're going to be going? I wasn't going to read through all of them, but I was just going to mention the ones that I went to that I know for a fact are so amazing. Edinburgh castle, Midhope, which is Lollybrock is just an experience that you will never even imagine. Sterling Castle was too much for us to do when I was there. Tracy, you're doing that thing that you don't like when I do when you look <laughs> away. Sterling Castle is a huge, immense place, and we didn't get to go, so I'm thrilled that I'm actually now going to get to go back. We're going there are there. also some, fr some photo ops um, having to do with the show. Um, hi, uh, Glen Fittich distillery tour and whiskey <laughs> tasting. We also said no to that. Our tour company, um, who we used, uh, was Inverness tours. Hugh is amazing. Um, we actually said no to that cause we had my kids with us. So we ended up going to a few other places, but Culloden battlefield, which hi, you're an outlander fan. You have to go to Culloden, um, Clava Cairns, which is the real standing stones. Okay. My son, we Ian, who is actually nearby, like loved it. Clava Cairns is just breathtaking. Um, they're doing a Loch Ness boat cruise. I went over there, you guys. And I was like, if you've never been there, I was like, Ugh, Loch Ness, whatever. Like it's so touristy. I got over there. It's miles and miles and miles long and it's stunning. So when I heard this, that they're doing a boat tour, I we are doing a boat tour, Carol. We, what? we, what? we, yeah, we. I, can't, I still can't even believe it. <laughs> um, yeah. Urquhart, Urquhart, if I'm saying this right, Urquhart Castle, we just, it just happened to be nearby. So we were like, all right, let's go check it out. The kids and Tom and I were just mesmerized by this place. Just amazing. 
Um, so the bottom line is, ooh, a stop in Loch Lomond, you guys. <clears throat> Let's just say Mop Tom has some family in um, Paisley outside of Glasgow. Hi, Lynn. Hi, Alistair. Um, so I will be calling them. I've already told Mop, Mop friend Hugh, um, who lives nearby as well. But the bottom line is just I'm looking at this stuff. Um, <clears throat> you guys, this trip is going to be amazing. If be you've ever lifetime. sat back and gone, I want to go to Scotland, but I don't know what to do. I don't know how to plan it. I wouldn't know the first thing about come on this tour. And I'm telling you guys right now, book it soon. You're talking about only 45 people and they shut it down. Right. Okay. It's one They're bus. Adding it one bus. One bus. They're not adding another one. So if you don't get in this thing, it's gone. So the bottom line is put down your down payment, start looking into it. Um, don't look into flights yet because you're not going to get the best deals until at least, what did she say? Like May, June? Well, there's group air available. So we should say yeah. that, um, the price of the tour is incredibly reasonable and it's incredibly in line with, um, other places that I've seen. Yeah. Um, oh, it's best. Yeah. 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 Um, it's, it is a land only price, but there's group air available. All this information is up on the creative adventures website, which we will link to, and we'll have the link like on the screen right now. There's the link. See, there it is. There it is. Cause I will add it. Um, Carol, you, you happen to be sitting with, um, one of the special guests that have already been booked for this tour, correct? <laughs> Yeah, you're, you're sitting. You're sitting with yeah. a special guest of the tour. The, the real reason. Oh, he's coming. <laughs> this guy, he's coming. You guys, any of you who own one of those paper doll pocket Jamies, yeah, from Star. So like yeah, I know we've we've like beaten a dead horse with this, but where do you think Stars got the idea for pocket Jamie? This is the real, the only, the original Pocket Jamie. Hi. And my man's coming with us. <laughs> so all of you are going to get to hold him and pet him. We might have to him. we might have to divvy up Pocket Jamie so he spends a night in different rooms. <laughs> <laughs> you, guys, you guys, sometimes go to Pocket Jamie on Facebook. You don't even know like all the pictures that we already have of Pocket Jamie. But wait, Carol, there's okay. more. There's more. Um, Pocket Jamie notwithstanding, we have actually have a guest on the tour already that um, Lisa at Creative Adventures has confirmed that is so awesome, I don't even know what to do with myself. Okay? All y'all are coming home it, speaking language. <laughs> you're going to be speaking the Gaelic. Because on our tour, special guest at the fa the finale, the finale, the final, the the bon voyage dinner is the Outlander Gaelic consultant who taught Sam Hewen how to say Sassanus. You know, any any like Gaelic thing he calls Claire, he learned it from this guy. Augie O'Brien is going to be our special guest. At the final dinner of this trip. And if you aren't impressed that Tracy just said his name, hopefully correctly. I really try. You should definitely be impressed that my man's coming to this dinner. I'm here to help. Um, we might be working on another, uh, like, possible... <laughs> Possible we, we, surprise like, or two. Just, like, we have not yet begun to surprise, you we, guys. You guys, we have not even begun. Like, this is just, like, basically after a couple months of, like, you know, working with Creative Adventures on this. This is, like, we haven't even really, like, scratched the surface yet, okay? So, I can't... What the hell? I can't stress enough. This tour is going to be epic. And y'all... You got to jump on this because like, you know, Carol and I are telling all our friends and we're telling like all yeah. of our Outlander people uh -huh. that we've known for years and years. So Bar, Jane, Nancy, I'm already telling people. So you guys better book this yeah. fast because yeah. it's yeah. going. So we're, we're not going to talk much more about it. You know, again, I'll put the website link back up here again, go on the website, take a look. Um, 
you know, there, there are, we have, there are special, um, $50 off for the first, I'm going to get this wrong. So go on the website and look, look for sure. But there's special discounts for the first 12 people who sign up. And then there's an early bird discount until like March 23rd, I think. Um, Just go on the website. It's all on the website. Um, I can't, like you guys, you guys, how much fun is this going to be? Like, I'm telling you, every time we would like talk with Lisa about like, you know, we're going here, we're going there, we're going here, we're going there. It's just, it's just amazing. It's going to be like um, two nights in Edinburgh, a night in Fort William. Two, uh, nights, in two, nights, in, two nights in Inverness, one night in Aberdeen, one night in Glasgow. I'm yeah. telling you, and it is not Glasgow. I do not want to hear any of you saying Glasgow. It's Glasgow. Um, so, so it's going to be so epic. Like, I don't even know what to do with myself. Um, so we will have guys, much more information about this as we go on, as we go on. Like, I mean, come Listen. on, Droughtlander is going to be all about getting your butts on the bus. y'all. And you know what? On the bus. On the bus. You guys come hang out with us. Like how many years have we been saying this? Oh my God. You guys, we have some other Outlander friends who we met years ago in Virginia, like Lara, Clay, Christy. Tanya, Jamie. JJ, 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 come on, you guys, it is time. How many years have we said, we're going to plan this, we're going to plan this. This isn't right around the corner. This is Scotland. This is going to be the trip of a lifetime. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that is, honest to God, that is all I have we to say stress, about that. Just in case you don't get it, we're with you guys every step of the way on this tour. So it's a bus. Don't tell them that. They might be like, oh, God. (laughs) It's a bus of us. Like, (laughs) (laughs) how long have you been planning that? I just thought of it. I just thought of it. You guys, she's nuts. All right. So we've taken a little bit longer than we normally would with our, like, pre-show here. And sorry for all you guys who were like, I really am not going on this trip. I just, like, you know, wanted to see what you thought. Whatever. Um, Can I take Pocket Jamie off my shoulder now? Yes. You may. Okay, let's get back to what we're here, what we're all here for, which is to talk about Outlander episode four thirteen, the last episode of season four. I shouldn't be clapping. I know we're not. Well, I don't, I, I'm sad that it's at an end. Um, I'm kind of, but it's exciting. It's a finale. It is the finale, so it's very exciting, and, and it's kind of nice to know that like break but whatever um and we have so much other stuff to talk about we're carol and i you guys feel free to like yell at us if we don't um if we don't come through with with good videos about uh mop drought under diversions videos like like totally get on us about that because we're gonna do better than last year because we sucked last year <laughs> okay okay outlander 413 man of worth i don't know if it's a man of worth or no i think it's just man of worth uh, the writer is the wonderful Tony Graffia. Gets the ultimate, not penultimate, but ultimate episode. And the director is um, a gentleman named Stephen Wolfenden, who uh, somebody on Twitter, I believe, told me he's also directed episodes of Cold Dark. So, Stephen Wolfenden, might we get that Outlander Cold Dark crossover episode that the world needs someday? Gwen's pulled her coming out. That just ended, didn't Ross, it? Jamie, Ross, <laughs> Jamie. I don't. Even, I, I don't even Sorry. Know. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody have a cigarette? <laughs> okay. Okay. The Easter egg. The Easter egg is it's like in the sixties, and there's the woman on a park bench, and her little kids are playing cowboy and Indian, and then they pan right. over to. Um, Somebody reading a newspaper puts the paper down, and it's clearly um, an Indian gentleman, and he looks kind of pissed off. Thoughts? Oh, he looked pissed off. Yeah, I thought he looked pissed off. Um, when you're not looking, I'm gonna look and see. I I don't know. I thought he looked wistful, or um, I have to say that this Easter egg was like the quintessential great Outlander Easter egg. Because it did exactly what it needed to do. 
Do you know what that Easter egg was about? Because I didn't know until I watched it a second time. Shut up. Are you kidding me? Yeah. It was the Indian slash Native American who Claire found his shoes and There you go. I didn't and get he it. was I didn't it, get it at first. But he was he was he was tortured. <laughs> he was mentally and emotionally tortured in this life, in this time, that he had to go back and let them know what happened. And and it must have been so god awful for him that they didn't listen. I know, did- I know, I know, I know. Oh, totally, I get that. I just totally, it flew right by me. It flew right by me. I Because I didn't see this. The second time I saw this, I saw the Otter Tooth necklace, and I was like, oh, it's Otter Tooth. Oh, my God. I had no idea. Yeah, no, I knew. You got right that from the, from the first one? Absolutely. But you know what, Tracy? You know what? I bet you know. I know why. Because I am way more into that whole, like, mystical, spiritual thing. You're like, yeah, yeah, whatever. You're, like, very concrete and, like, black and white. And I'm like, oh, so that character in the book, I just like loved and in the show and that I just loved the way they did it, you know, and it was just oh, the fact that no one listened to him and now they know they should have. But I oh, know. well, I know. what are you going to do? Hindsight. We all have situations in life that we should have listened. Right. Right. Um, I, but that was just that was like that was the Easter egg that I love to say where it's just so it's tangentially connected to what's going on and you really have to kind of think about it a little bit and it makes total sense and you might not even get it for a while like the last week's one where that i think they were drinking like whiskey or something (laughs) what it ended up being was that's when roger goes and chucks something in the fire it's like the barrel of that stuff they were drinking like it just it made total sense eventually but Bucky Jamie, what do you think? <laughs> I own E E and just put him there. Oh, okay. I um, think that's a good idea. Let's keep Bucky and Jamie in there. I know. I know. Okay. So it's uh we see Jamie and Claire and Ian and it's New York seventeen seventy, we we see on the screen. Um, and they find the Mohawk village. And Jamie's a little bit like, you know, like doing a little spy work and the village is all the buzz. They're all <coughs> like doing their thing on a like Saturday afternoon or whatever. Um, but Jamie's, you know, Jamie's no dummy. Jamie's like, comes back. He's like, yeah, they know we're here. <laughs> so we need to hit them up right away. I love how that was done. Like they made themselves the prey. It was yeah. so cool. Yeah. Yeah. It was very cool. Um, very cool. So, so they go down there and, you know, all the Mohawk are like kind of spying on them and they sort of join the little party, you know. So by the time that Jamie and Ian and Claire, you know, roll into town, there's all these Mohawks surrounding them and they've got kind of an audience. So Jamie says a few words in Mohawk, with subtitles. Right, right. Um, and then he turns the mic over to Ian and I loved that scene with Ian. And Ian rocks the mic. <laughs> Ian rocks the mic. Ian rocked that scene. Ian rocked that scene. Um, it, it was wonderful. He's basically, he's saying like, you know, we are here to trade. We, uh, uh, they want to trade for their friend. Uh, you know, we sold this guy to you. I forget if, I forget if he said this at that point or if he, said that later when he when he recognized uh redcoat indian i don't know but anyway ian speaks of all sorts of mohawk and it's his mohawk is really great like it's really great um so yes they want to they want to trade for roger they pull out the picture they're like you know this guy um then ian recognizes redcoat indian and he's like yeah yeah it's me do you remember me like we sold this guy to you and we we want him back now and we're willing i'm going to give you this back this necklace Look, we've got this oh. um, this bag, this lovely bag of pots and pans, <laughs> <laughs> valued at six hundred dollars. <laughs> you can hang these over your kitchen island; they'll look great. I was like, "Yeah, you know, guys, like a bunch of pot, pots and pans. You're gonna maybe need to up the ante a little bit if you give, if you want to get Roger back. Just, just right." Saying. Um. How much do you really care about Rob? <laughs> I know, right? So the chief is like, looks everything over and he's like, um, yeah, he calls them these trinkets. Like, yeah, you're bringing us trinkets. Great. Uh-huh. Okay, whatever. So they're like 
kind of trying to demonstrate like what all the stuff is. And Claire's like take it off her scarf, like, no, you know, it can be like a like a scarf. Like a big cap. Or a brooch, a pterodactyl feature. Um but like the woman is not looking at her scarf. She's looking at what Claire is wearing here. Claire is wearing Otter oh, Tooth snack glass. And that does not sit well with the mohawk. The mohawk are like, what the heck is that? They're like... Um, with, with Sans Santa Margarita. So they get one look at that and they're like, yeah, no. Like, you need to like... Get the hell out of Dodge. They're so, like, Claire. Claire is, like, the Elaine of, you know, of uh, the 18th century. <laughs> Everything. Once they see Otter Tooth's necklace, it is shut down. And that's it. What did you think of that whole scene? Well, I think Otter Tooth made his mark, man. He, yeah, he, well, we don't know that at this point. Like, they just see that necklace and they know, like, you know, no, 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 that's They're bad like, mojo. Get, get, get out. Too bad we can't get stay. Out. Um, and, and I'm sitting here like, Claire, say like, I'm so sorry. Here, like, I get that she was trying to negotiate, and that was cool, but ask, what's the problem? Explain to me. Like, maybe understand. It would be easy to do, because they all speak English. <laughs> gonna say. Tracy, that was borderline... Um, okay, let's go back to River Run, shall we? And how much did you love? My God, it was so great. How much did you love? So they have like this, like I, I can't even do. It was, it was like, I guess Murta has his own theme now, and the Murta theme is like. <laughs> Murta, like, you know, arrives at River Run, he gets out. I forget if he was in a carriage or if he was on a horse. I don't honestly remember. But um, he just gets out and they have, like, this, like, studly Murta music. That's a, what I'm going to say. So he gets hottest, out. Hottest one on the show this oh season. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He looked great. He looked really, really great. So he's at River Run and he's eating dinner. Jocasta's staff has made him a roast that looks delicious with all sorts of vegetables and like really great stuff there. And he's just like, and he thanks her kindly for the roast. The roast and beast. Let me just be, let me just say, um, Mertz is licking his chops over this roast and Jocasta's licking her chops over Mertz. <laughs> Did you pick that up at that point? Oh my god, yes. I wrote it down. Joe makes a dinner like, and licks her chops too. Oh yeah, she's like... Yeah. She knows what she wants. So she's all like, you know... She basically wants to know what landed him in jail. And, uh... You know, they talk a little bit about... I didn't really read this, like... I think they talk about the regulators there, and she's a little concerned about him being a regulator, and you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, so Jocasta tells Marta, well, you know, uh, oh, he says something like, I, you know, need to, oh, she, I think she said, like, you shouldn't stay at any one place for very long. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah I know it. I just came in to check on my niece. Um, or Brianna, or my, whatever. Um, and Jocasta's like, she's all the good. Drawer. The artiste. Yes, the artiste. The drawer. Um, she's all good. You know, it's all good. She was really, like, uh, she was really much more lively when Lord John was here. Um, but, and he got called away to, you know, for business. And now <laughs> she's bored AF. But, but he's going to be back soon because they've got a wedding to plan. <laughs> Marta, like, <laughs> Marta, you know, if he could have done a spit take, he should have. Because we're just like. Marta's like, say what? <laughs> Or just like, excuse me? What? 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 So Come yeah. Down. Yeah. And Mark's like, oh, hell no. No, 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 like, I hate that guy. Um, so he kind of freaks out. And then he says to Jocasta, like, I mean, I know you're fond of weddings because you've had three of them. And she is like. She 
she's like, you are even more rude now than you were 20 years ago. Um, and she's like, yeah, um, have a good dinner and, uh, later, you know, uh, peace out. I'm out of here. And how many of you were like, yeah, they're going to do it before the episode is over. <laughs> um, I would, wouldn't you? Oh my God. Damn. No. no. What Say a transformation he, from he, season one. Oh, what do you mean with Marta? Mm-hmm. Well, Marta was always kind of hot. Like, even in season two, you know, he was, he was bagging his babes, like, around, all around, remember? That's when he and Claire started to be... I never bagged a babe. <laughs> um, he was, yeah, I mean, like, he would tell Claire all about his little exploits, remember? When they were becoming buds. Oh, yeah. You know? When so, they were singing for their supper? Yeah. Well, that was season one. I don't know that he was, like, really, like, like you know, taking numbers at that point. But, like, in season two, he was definitely, when they were in France, all those French women, oh, he was, like. My man. He was having his share. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, he was <laughs> he, he had his share. Uh, no, I, I, I totally remember one scene with Claire where he was like, you know, you know, giving details. He was, you know, yeah, he was, yeah. There was like some, some, some like maid lady, like some, you know, some French maid. <laughs> she was a hoe. Some of the household help or something that was into Murta. Uh, oh, I don't. I, I kind of remember that. Yeah. Okay. All right, anyway, so now we turn to Brie, and Phaedra is, like, doing sort of, like, I don't know, I don't know, she's very, like, call the midwife here. She's very, like, they sent me from Nanata's house, um, <laughs> and I'm just checking everything here. <laughs> so, yeah, she's, like, Brie's, like, you know, Brie's, like, oh, you know, you've birthed babies before? And Phaedra's, like, yep, I've done it before. It's all good. Um... And With that thick Scottish accent. Bree's all like, she's got some drawing. Did you happen to notice how thin Bree was, except for the basketball? <laughs> I was like, some of it carry that way. I think you did, didn't you? Hell no, I carried every way. <laughs> she's like thinner than, she's like a runway model. She's like a Victoria's Secret show until right here. Some and then of it like, carry that way. Like from the back, you're like, fine. From the front, you're like, whoa! Like, do we need to call the call the honest house right now? <laughs> well, um, I couldn't see my feet with number two. So, um, so yeah, Bree's not happy with her drawing, and she's never going to get it right. And then they use this as a metaphor for her being a mother. Um, and Phaedra's all, you know, like uh, she cheers her up. I don't know. She's just like, yeah, you're going to do fine. Whatever, it's all good. Whatever. Um, okay. We're back with the whole, the, the Mohawk, New York, Jamie and Claire part. So Jamie and Claire are talking and Claire's like, there's a story here. I know that there is. I don't know what it is. Um, but I'm going to find out. I want to find out. And Jamie's like, yeah, whatever. I'm going back to get him. I'm going back to rescue Roger tonight. And, um, Claire's like, oh, no, you know, no, Jamie, no, no. Um, and then we get maybe the line of the episode, which is <laughs> Jamie, like, yeah, I know a story. Uh-huh. You know, the story where I went and rescued you at Fort William. So shut up. Oh, yeah. Shut <laughs> up. It's like, snap for Jamie. In z formation. And I loved it. It was just classic Jamie and Claire banter. Like, oh, yes, I snap, really? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah I can't go, ro go rescue Roger because, uh... Done it before. Not the first time, you know. At this rodeo, I'll thank you to take your hands off my wife. <laughs> oh my god! Remember that? Remember that? How that can I forget? Like, oh, I remember where I was when I read it. Oh my god! Oh. AKA Point Pleasant, New Jersey. Okay. So they're setting up camp, right? Out, whatever. And then Jamie's like, you know, jump move. And then, woo! And oh, the Mohawks on them. Oh, 
the Mohawks is out on them. And and Joanna Gaines. Now it's where I start complaining. That's where I might start complaining a little bit. What? I oh. might, I just say, you know, the, this was the, like the woman who wants the stone back. I, I, I'm I'm sorry. I just have Joanna Gaines wants her oh stone back. Oh my god, and it's totally Joanna Gaines. Joanna Gaines wants her stone back. Good call, because you know she wants to like put it on a shelf, like with the. Decorative. They should have given Joanna a, a little role, a little cameo in this show. Oh my god, you're not kidding. She is one hundred percent Joanna Gaines. Don't you totally want to be Joanna Gaines? Every single bit, the designer, her history, her ancestry, all of it. She's so gorgeous. And I see this woman and I'm like, this is Joanna Gaines. Oh my God. She was totally Joanna Gaines. That is such a good call. I never she's, thought of she's that. She's the big decorator. Oh, the teepees. I know. <laughs> of right? the longhouse. She's the longhouse decorator. <laughs> I think this kitchen is fun because there's a lot of mix and match going on. <laughs> I don't think they're really longhouses though. In the it wasn't village. a very, the one they showed last week wasn't very long. And I got kind of annoyed because if you go to the Museum of Natural History, like they have like the workups and stuff and it's the long house. And when yeah. I was reading it, you know, I was like, that's, where's the long house? But Whatever. more like, <laughs> not made of, not, it's not Adobe. It's like, it, it, they're like rounder. They're like, uh, yeah, it, was, it wasn't, it definitely no. wasn't like what I was picturing. Yeah. yeah. Um, let me tell you something. You guys, I'm just going to interject really quick. And I'm sure I've done this before, but I'm going to do it again. So our area is very um, Native American. There's a lot of Native American culture. I have a um, plaque in the woods up the street about the Lenny Lenape um, Indians. <clears throat> and it's like my dream to find like an arrowhead. It is my dream. You guys, for Christmas, I got it. Did, Tracy, did I tell you this? I got a new metal detector. Oh, I think you did, yes. I purchased it for myself. I got a new metal detector that is, has yet to come out of the box. But that is my dream around Like the here. wine glasses I gave her. Just because, because, you guys, it's really hard. What I want to do is go to certain places like Revolutionary War sites, but you can't legally just walk on there with your metal detector. <laughs> so I'm like around here. That's so great. I'm going to take my dog for a walk and with my metal detector. My friend Barb, who wants to come to Scotland, you guys, and she is, how much fun is Barb? Oh, my God, seven days, oh, fun. Um, she wants to come to Scotland, too, and she's a metal detector nerd like me. And I'm telling you right now, it is like my dream to find an arrowhead <clears throat> or some type of tool or something because that's what I have around here is Native American history. Okay, continue. Um, I don't even know where I was. Yeah, so, like, this whole Mohawk fight never happened in the books. Very I much reminded me, again. very much reminded me, and I'm about to be spoilery on Twilight, so, you know. If Who you haven't read Twi Twilight at this point? Now, here's what it is. So, in the books... In the books, there's no fight. There's no, like, like, in the books, this whole Mohawk sequence is rather subdued. I mean, I didn't, I meant to, I meant to go reread it today and I didn't do it. But, but in general, you know, they basically go into the camp. They do, like, like, Jamie does end up, like, maybe, maybe sort of kind of taken prisoner a little bit of, and, like, thrown into the shed with or wherever the hell Roger is. Right. But like, you know, they also like go to like a little like celebration where they like hang out with the Mohawk. And this whole story about Ottertooth, you hear because Claire and Jamie, I think, are sitting around with the other Mohawk, just kind of like, you know, getting to know each other. Right. And this story gets Getting told. to know yes. you. <laughs> there is no big, like, you know, Matrix battle. Okay? And maybe, and, and where I'm going with Twilight is in the last Twilight book, and again, sort of sp spoiler for, like, if you haven't read tri Twilight by now. Um, if they haven't read it by now, they're not going the to. The last they Twilight book builds up to a big showdown between 
you know, like, like Bella and Edward and the family and all their friends and the, like, the, the vampire, like, leadership, okay, who've come from, like, you know, the Volturi is what they're called. They've come from, like, the Vatican City next door to Vatican City, wherever they live in Italy. They've come to have this big showdown, right? Because, like, Edward and Bella have had this, like, half vampire, half human child. <laughs> I'm sorry. It just sounds Named Renesmee. <laughs> Named Renesmee. Um, you know, okay, and you're thinking, like, some big thing is going to happen, right? And nothing really does. Nothing really happens. They all, like, there's, the conflict is like this, and they're like, duh, 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 duh. Thank God for Carlisle. And nothing really happens. They kind of, like, work it out and and the end, right? In the movie version, you know, clearly there's no conflict. And clearly you need some sort of excitement. So what they did in the movie was actually genius. Because that movie, that very last Twilight movie, sucked. I donkey cried when I thought Carlisle. Except for the last 20 minutes where... They do have a big honking Matrix fight. Okay. And you're like, as a viewer, you're like... Or as a book reader, I should say. You're crying. But you're like... I, okay. I'm just going to sit back and see where this goes because I have no idea. And they do all sorts... They kill off all these characters. They do all this. They do all that. And then you realize... It's not really happening. It's just what it's just a, one character what showing Alice another character seeing. what could happen, mm -hmm. and then if they don't work it out recently, whatever. Right. Um, and it was kind of I felt kind of the same way with this this fight that they have here with the Mohawk and Jamie, where I'm just like, what? Bah, bah, bah. And I have written down Jamie's the Indian Matrix. He was totally the Indian Matrix. <clears throat> Jamie is fighting off all these Indians. Blue, 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 blue. And this might not even be where it's really happening. I might even be talking about where they sneak in later on. But there's both of these. So I don't even think it's here. So, like, everything I just said, like. Well, it's not because I'm watching. Apply it's... it to, like, fast forwarding. They just so. had a quick little fight, and then Joanna Gaines comes in and is right. like, Jamie, tells them about Jamie attitude. takes down the one guy, and he's yeah. like, yeah, this guy's going to go. Yeah. Joanna and Gaines Joanna, was pretty great in this, though. Joanna Gaines is awesome, and she tells them about Ottertooth, and then you feel bad. You feel bad for them. You feel bad for Ottertooth. You feel bad that she's, like, now realizing we should have listened to him. You feel bad for Claire for being when she was stuck out there, and Ottertooth came to see her, and Claire's. Then you start feeling bad for Claire. You're like, oh, Claire's not in her own time, and she knows Ottertooth was from her time. And oh. I didn't really think that. I, I'm so glad you thought of Joanna Gaines because I didn't really have a name for her and I just called her Mohawk Lady. But Joanna Gaines is much better. So and from, from henceforth until the end of time, she will She's be called Joanna Gaines. Joanna Gaines. <laughs> okay. So they come in. Jamie takes down one of the guys. He's like, yeah, you know, you know, back off or, or he gets it. And Joanna, Ga Joanna Gaines is kind of great in this whole scene because she's like, Okay, so you kill him. Like, okay, we'll just come back later. Yeah, you. Um, like, really? Like, come on. You know, let, let's use some reason here. So she wants a stone. And they're like, yeah, you can have the stone. Give us our friend back. And she's like, eh, I don't know if that's going to work because we could just take the stone from you. And if we didn't take it now, come back, like, any time, you don't know when, and get it. So... They're kind of at an impasse here. But she tells the story of Ottertooth. And um, this is pretty much, the, this is the same story from the book. Like he, he just sort, sort of shows up one day. He's warning them about the future. You have to kill the white man. You're going to be, you know, you'll have no one to tell your story. At which point it becomes very Hamilton-esque. Because I know you have not seen Hamilton, but that's a big deal in Hamilton where like, who will tell your story? Um, is a very it's that's a powerful theme of the of the show. Um, I have like a very interesting story, so I really don't <laughs> care. This um, is my story. <clears throat> so her, so she's like out of teeth. You know, he went to war with the white man. He scalped a lot of people, and we started to get really worried because he's like causing all problems. And so we kicked him out. And he, but he kept coming back, and he would just rant and rave in the forest. And then I was like, 
Oh, is this where the part where he made a bear suit? Okay, wait. Oh no, if, that was a couple episodes ago where another crazy guy like, Another that crazy that pretend out of tribe. Mohawk. Not Mohawk Mohawk. Wait. Okay, so is this in the book? The Otter Tooth story? Yes. I know the Otter Tooth story is. So No, but but like what I said before, the way the way it happens in the book is like Jamie and Claire just sort of go to the um why do we get texts all the time when we're doing this? I don't know. What is the world just you. like? No, like Jill, third sister Jill just texted us about being in some bar in Gettysburg. Guys, I was like, oh my god, she totally heard that text come in, and meanwhile, we both got it. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, in the books, I don't remember. Like, I think Jamie and Claire just roll in, and the the Mohawk are like, hey. Because don't forget, Ian, like, is, is, you know, Ian's pretty friendly with the, with, I don't know that they're friendly with the Mohawk. Well, I think maybe he is a little bit because, and again, in the books, they're not in New York. They're, they're much closer. Okay. All right, I got to jump in at some point. Um, but, but they just roll in. The Mohawk are like, okay, you know, you can hang here. Let's have dinner or whatever. And they're, or let's, you know, smoke the beef pipe. I don't know what, what they all like gather and, and somebody tell, somebody tells, I, don't, I forget if it's, they tell Claire this story or they tell somebody this story, but somebody tells this story. Yes. Okay. I think that I, I think that I really am a believer in the categorization of Native American culture where you had the nicer, like. I don't know, Cherokee, like I said, Lenny Lenape we had nearby. There's like a million sets. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And the Mohawk were considered fierce and scary and scalpers. And so would the Mohawk really be like, oh, no, Otterhead. Like, you know, (laughs) (laughs) what's his name, Otterhead? Otterhead. No, Ottertooth, <laughs> we're going to cast you out because the white man, we get along with the white man. I don't know. I just... Well, no, I think you're making a big leap here. I, th- I think there's a big difference between, like, we get along with the white man and, like, you're scalping all these, all these you know, white dudes and, like, that's going to have repercussions for us. Like, you know, the military is going to come in and, like, we're going to be in a lot of shit for this. Like, I, th- I, th- I think that... That just makes it sound like the Mohawk. And again, I always prerequisite with, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just going based on what I've read, what I've <clears throat> If the Mohawk were that fierce, would they be like, oh, no, Ottertooth, you know, we're trying to forge a relationship with them. Or would they be like, yeah. I think it's a statement of guys. just how nuts Ottertooth really was. When even the Mohawk... The Mohawk, the like, the Mohawk who never met a fight or a battle or a war, that they didn't be like, whoa, let's join this, baby. That the Mohawk were like, yeah, this dude be crazy. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. And see, I guess my ultimate issue is with historical fiction. And how much of this is the way it would have happened and how much of this is the way it happens in the book or the show. If that makes sense. I mean, like, in all honesty, you know, you've got three guys rolling into town. You've got Jamie, Claire, and Ian. Ian knows the language, is probably known to some of these guys, or if he's not known directly, Ian can be like, hey, do you know so-and-so from the Tuscarora? I'm sorry, I don't... There's a a tribe... the, the, whatever the tribe in the TV show is that's in North Carolina, it's the it's the Tuscarora, I think, in the books. And Ian's friends with all of them. Ian's friends with all of them. So Ian could very well be like, "Do you know so and so from there?" And they be they might be like, "Yeah, we know them." Like, you, okay, this guy knows them. He's you know, all right, he's a good guy. He can be trusted. Um, it's not, but it's not like Jamie and Claire are bringing in the British Army. Or they're bringing in, you know, the, the the militia, the New York militia. It's like these three people who, one of them a woman, who's just like kind of wandered into camp. So I don't think that 
they're, they're I don't I don't know that they're so threatening that like the Mohawk are gonna be like you know a kill them right now. I don't know anybody would be like that right now. They'd just be like, what do they want? I do like the concept of them walking along. They know they're they're the prey. They know they're, but it kind of takes balls. You know what I mean? It kind of takes guts for right. them to walk along and be, yeah. Right, right, right. All right. So, so back to the back to um, joining. And they'll be likewise respected by the right. Mohawks. My point. <clears throat> So Joanna Gaines feels this, or she, she tells the story about Otter Tooth. He was a big pain. They finally got rid of him. They scalped, they, they, they killed him. They cut off his head, but they, but, and they buried it far away. And Clara's like, I can take him there because I found it, you know, and that's, and that's, that's how the whole connection is. So Joanna Gaines is like, we want the stone so we can see what's coming. And Jamie and Claire are like, well, we'll give you the stone if you help us get our friend back. So I was Who's just like, skills? right. I, I, I was a little, I guess I had a little bit of a question about why Joanna Gaines would sort of go off by herself, who these guys were that were like with her and did it. Did it? I guess I was sort of under the impression at that point that the whole tribe that they did want the stone back. So, so I mean, I, I think after two too. viewings, I I get it a little more that like Joanna, like the rest of the tribe, does not want the stone. The stone is bad, but that Joanna Gaines is like, no, the stone is good because I believe it, and I think that if we have this stone, we will gain the knowledge of what's going to happen to us. But the rest of the tribe doesn't believe it. Now, how she got these, you know, her lackeys to go with her, like, did she convince them that this is the, the deal? Are they her, I don't know, her sons? Or whatever. She has some, she has some supporters who have come with her. But I didn't quite get, like, why they supported her. And I also didn't quite get, like, this fracture in the tribe between the people who thought the stone was evil and she who thought the stone was a valuable tool. Mm -hmm. I certainly didn't get that on my, like, first watch. Mm -hmm. I think I was sort of figuring out a little bit on the second watch. I mean, were you like that too? Like, um, I just was like, why is this this faction? Like, why is this this? They were the breakaways, right? I mean, I figured like what I wrote down was, you know, uh, doesn't the whole tribe want the stone, or is the tribe afraid of the stone? She's smarter, and she recognizes that it will be useful. Or not smarter, but like she wants it because she sees a use in it that she can't right. convince the tribe. I wish that we would have seen that a little bit. I wish I wish maybe we would have seen in the original scene where they go and they try to trade it for the stone. And maybe it's there and it's really subtle and I just didn't get it. Um, but I wish we could have seen her like almost maybe, maybe be like, excuse me, I think maybe we should like take this deal. Like, like whatever's in the suitcase. Like, you know, okay, Howie, I'm, I'm ready to take the deal now. Um, and get shot down. And then you get a little more sense of like why she she's interested in getting this as opposed to the rest of the tribe who didn't. It, it was confusing to me. It was it was just kind of confusing. I don't know. I don't know. Should we move on? It was confusing to me, but I'm going to talk about it more as we move on. Okay. I don't really have anything to say right now. All right, we're back at River Run. Bree's talking to Marta. Bree's like, "Yeah, that wedding is a ruse. Whatever." Um, and I, this was a lovely little conversation. This was like 30 seconds, but it was just, just, just lovely. Um, you know, Marge is like, what the hell, you know, um, what the hell were you there to see Stephen Bonnet for? And, and Bree was basically like, you know, I wanted to forgive him. And Marge was like, did it help? And she's like, you know what? It helped enough. It was, Hell no. It, you know what? It's good. It's good. And then Merch is like, 
do you think maybe you could forgive your father in the same way? And she just, Sophie Skelton, this might be your moment of the season, in my opinion. She kind of like, she, she hears this question. She sort of like thinks about it for a minute. She, I don't even know if she thinks about it, but then you just see this small smile, not even a smile, a hint of a smile. She's like, I already have. And it was just a lovely, lovely moment from Sophie. Sophie Skelton like did a really good job in this episode. I thought, okay, I'm going to jump in now. Okay. Speaking as a surrogate for my neighbor, Teresa, who has seen the shows, you know, Teresa, Mm -hmm. she's been to outlander events with us. She is not a book reader. She's more visual and she more appreciates the show. She's a visual learner. She's the visual person. So, she, I spoke with her today about this whole thing, and she is on board with Brie a million percent. She was grossed out by Jamie being all, what did he say when they first got in the big fight? He basically you told whore, her. Like, you are your harlot, blah, 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 blah. She, which I found so interesting because I had the other take on it, which was, Hey, this is back then. Brie needs to win in Rome, uh-huh. you know? And she, Teresa was like, oh, no. Like, I get it. You're right. It's a different time period. But she really had a hard time with Jamie, like, talking to her like that, calling her that. She really likes Brie a lot, a lot, a lot. I do, too. I mean, I, I thought Brie was great in this episode. I really do. She has complaints about this not being the same as seasons one, two, and three. And I was like, she's again, she hasn't read the books. So I am very interested to know the percentage of non book readers if they're still on board. You know what I mean? Because I always say that when, you, when people who jump ship from the books, they jump ship during drums. So I think that, and I, Teresa's I, not jumping ship, but she's like, she's bit, she's missing Scotland, she's missing the whole Scottish feel of the show you know and you know so again like i said she's not jumping ship but um but she loves brie whereas like some not that i don't i think brie's she made the same point we have about brie is she's like oh my god she's so much better suited to this time frame Mm -hmm. and to this life she's so much and how many times have we said that like in the 60s it was like a brie but now, like, she's more believable. She's a better actress. Sophie Scott, like, like, she's just, she dove into the whole thing. And she's eating it up. And it's great. You know what I mean? Right. So, found Well, it's that like what we've said. She's got, she's got stuff to work with now that's not just, okay, <laughs> be a bratty teenager. Mm-hmm. But a likable bratty teenager. I mean, that's right. like, she's got, like, real stuff to play now. Right. And then I'm going to hold my thoughts because I have plenty to say at the very end. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and again, I, I think that the TV show is maybe probably a little more cohesive than the, than the books. You're right that a lot of people jump ship in this book because again, it's not all about Jamie and Claire. We've said that before. Um, they're doing very different things. Right. Um, it's a lot more America based and it's a lot more kind of what they're doing in their day to day life based. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, but, but I, so I think, I I don't know that you get that as much in the TV show. Uh, We need to get Jamie in a kilt again though. Y'all he needs to be in a kilt. Enough britches. Enough britches. Got to get him back in his kilt. He wears his kilt all the time in America in the books. So get him in his kilt. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but I, I loved that moment. I loved that moment with Martops. It's just great. Okay. It's a nighttime at the Mohawk. The Mohawk are having a sing-along. They're, um... A sing-along? I have, I have to say, I wrote down during this part, I just, the camp, I like, has, like, a lot of cool things. Like, if you just, like, if you do a watch where you're just looking around at the camp, like, they have really cool, like, things that they hang the meat on to dry and to keep away from the animals and stuff. Um, just like little, little, they're little tools throughout. And little lights on the trees because Joanna Gaines totally did yes. that. Yes. Joanna Gaines did a really good job with this, with the, <laughs> with the Mohawk camp. Um, okay. So 
Joanna Gaines is sneaking them back in to get Roger. Um, <clears throat> Jamie takes down the leaf guard, the leaf hut guard, and they go in and they get and they get Roger. Roger's right. like, "What?" He sees Clara like that. It worked. It worked just like they thought it would. Like where if it had just been Jamie, he would have been like, ah! "But then he sees Claire." Then he sees ah! Jamie, and Claire's like, "It's okay." Jamie's like, "You know." I'll give you, I, I can give you my apology right now, you know, more, more to come. And they are like, they get him out. And they're just about to make their getaway when along comes Rolf from Sound of Music. <laughs> I was going to say Ala- Alexandria, what's her name? <laughs> Cortese. I just saw somebody, I'm like, Congress, oh my God. The Congress person? Yeah, she just looks totally like all right, keep going. Just one of these people, one of these women looked like her. That's all. Okay. Keep going. Now, Rolf from Sound of Music comes along. You know, he's guard. He's guarding the thing, and he walks up. And, you know, uh, Joanna Gaines goes, Rolf, please. <laughs> Rolf. And then I wanted Windows. so bad. I wanted Windows. so bad for Jamie to take the um, Captain Von Trapp part. And, like, start to be, like, come away with us. <laughs> you know, Moa. And you have the nerve to look at me like, what? What the hell? Oh, my God, you didn't think that? It's right out of Sound of Music. It's right out of Sound of Music when they're at the Comet um, or the Abbey or whatever the hell they are. They're on the roof. Rolf shows up. Um, you know, there's Captain Von Trapp on Lee's all Lee's like, Rolf, please. And Rolf is about to blow his low whistle. And then Captain Von Trapp is like, you know, you know you don't want to do it. You're not one of them. You know, come we away with us. Do it. We all do it. We <laughs> love to do it. We do it all the time. I just did it. I want to do it again. <laughs> History of the world part one. <laughs> so all I know is I was full on Matrix at this point. <laughs> well, Jamie did not give the Captain Von Trapp. That was not. That speech. was not an Indian or Native American sound. P.S. Um, Jamie did not <laughs> give the Captain Von Trapp speech. So the Mohawk, the Mohawk guy is like, Rolf is like, you know, no, I have to tell. You know, they're here. It blows his whistle, uh, shoots his gun, whatever. Um, oh yeah, yeah. And yeah, now yeah. we get into this big fight that I think I was yeah. referring to earlier on. That I'm was that like, was Twilight. It I don't was, know where the hell this is going, but okay, we were whatever. Like, where's Jasper to teach everyone? <laughs> Jasper needs to be training everyone. You got to play that music. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Jamie had like a bunch of like. Way matrixy moves there. The legs were doing this. I don't know. Jamie's just taking down everybody. I mean, Jamie's good, but like, come on. I mean, ugh. Oh, oh, I like it. I like it. I like it. Totally disagree. I love it. Anytime, for God's sake, get us a little Sam Hewen slash Jamie Fraser in here kicking ass. I mean, I guess so. I guess so. But, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I will say. I prefer the whole this whole Mohawk sequence, how it went down in the books, better than on the TV show. It's just me, but 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 in the next breath, I could say, I guess I can see the issues. If you are if you are the TV show and you're the writers, I can see the issues with doing it the same way because it's much more subtle and much more layered in the books. And nothing really, you know, there's not really. I mean, yes, there's the whole like Father Alexander stuff that we saw last week which is probably the most violent of anything that happens in this whole sequence in the books. Um, which, which, which can be said now, because now we've seen that Jamie does infiltrate the camp that J- we hear about that whole, um, we hear about that whole um, thing from uh, Jamie's perspective. Jamie tells us, um, all about what happened because he saw it. I just want you to know I'm dumping into the butter tube. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm starting to get hungry. It's like seven o'clock now, and uh, we gotta we gotta get through this because I gotta eat dinner. Um, and I told we Ian he could order sushi. I know. We're I don't know if, whether we're gonna order out or go out or whatever, but whatever. 
Um, so, so yeah, I mean, I mean, Jamie, like, actually, like, got through this fight pretty good. I, you know, I, I was just like, how are they not taking him down? Like, there's a million of them and one of him. But eventually... I will take you down. I will take you down to Chinatown. Eventually, they take him down. So, okay. So, next day, I guess, light time, and, like, everybody's there at the tribe. And we are about to issue our, you know, our rulings. Um, the chief is about to let them know, let everybody know what's the deal. So, Joanna Gaines is first in line for sentencing. Joanna Gaines, uh, you, <laughs> you are charged with, like, going to get that otter tooth necklace, even though we told you not to, and your punishment is that you're banished from the tribe, you're no longer a Mohawk. Which I didn't really necessarily disagree with. Um... Nor did I. I mean, like, Joanna, again, and it goes What's back to, thinking? like... And, and who are these guys that she got to go with her? Right! I, I, well, I said I asked that before. Like, who are these... I mean, what's their motivation? And what happens to them? Do they get tossed out? Wait, can we... Can we drink every time they show Ian with the massive medallion? <laughs> it's a GPS medallion. <laughs> This is the right tribe. <laughs> like Claire and Jamie will be here, and then all of a sudden, behind them in the middle is, is Ian with a big medallion. <laughs> um, so, so she gets banished. Of course, this all goes down in English, which, again, that's crazy. How do you about feel that. about that? It's great. Whatever. Are you allowing yourself to be silenced? Yeah, because everyone said like I got I got to shut up about it. No, so, not like, everyone, not everyone. No, a pretty couple much of everyone, people. everyone. No, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not going there. I'm not going there. I don't like it. That's all I got to say. So Joanna Gaines out. I think she gets dragged off. I, and and again, I didn't necessarily disagree. I felt I bad didn't disagree for her. either. Like I, I thought but she I was, was like, nuts. Girlfriend? I mean, like. You 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 knew the rules and you broke them. Right, right, right. No, I completely agree. I I never really like I said. I I was just I was kind of baffled by this. It's like, what's your motivation for for doing this? Like you 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 bought the auto tooth thing and like I don't. But I, I again I didn't I didn't get that there was such a such a division in the tribe about keep the necklace, dump the necklace. Like I. It was just weird. It was weird to me. It was weird. It was, it was weird. not explained. It was it weird. Was... That's none, none of that's in the book. None of that's in the, like, this whole, like, you know, keep the necklace, toss the necklace. No. Okay. That so, sounds like a fun game for the bus. But then, keep toss. Keep the necklace. Toss, toss the, the necklace. necklace. Okay. But then, it gets better. Because then, the chief, now okay. Now squeaking like Anthony Michael Hall. The chief is like, I feel like I'm like the Wizard of Oz. And it's like, the like the Wizard of Oz is like doling out the different things. So, we're done with Joanna Gaines. Now, we get to Jamie and Claire and Ian. And, oh and the chief is like, it's the, this isn't really your fault. This is, I'm not, We're not blaming you guys for this. We're blaming that stone. Because that stone is cursed. And I'm thinking to myself... Well, yeah, like, it is kind of their fault, because they totally snuck into your camp and tried to steal your, like, you know, a dog face from you. Mm -hmm. So, like, the stone didn't do that. Archie's necklace didn't, like, get up and grow legs and walk over and try to steal dog face. That was Jamie Claire and Ian. But didn't you say to yourself, what the hell possessed them? Like, they were really going to get away with it. <laughs> I don't know. I think these, Jamie would have got... Were, these, were well, these meddling kids going to really get away with it? Yes, they were. Jamie, if Jamie had got, Jamie has gotten away with far worse. I, I, I believed him. I mean, if back in, back when Jamie was saying like, yeah, I remember another story where I saved you from Fort William. So shut up, Claire. Uh, if I were Claire, I'd have been like, oh, yeah, true that. Okay, and I'll thank you to it. take your hands off my wife. I, I think Jamie would 100% have gotten away with it. 100%. He knows, he knows these things. He knows how to do them. He knows he how to drinks, pull these off. And he knows he drinks things. and he knows things. Kind of like me. <laughs> so, okay. So, yeah, I mean, this is what I wrote down. See, my thinking is that it is their fault because they returned after they were banished, but whatever. Okay, fine, whatever. So they're sentenced, they're sentenced to take the stone and go and never come back. 
At which point Jamie stands up and goes, I volunteer as tribute. <laughs> and, it, and at which point I'm like, did I miss rewind that? Um, so yeah, <clears throat> Jamie, uh, Jamie is like, uh, keep me instead. Trade, you know, you're trading up. Trust me, bro. You're trading up because I am strong and I'm like hot. And, um, you know, I learn languages really quickly. So it's all good. And then he turns to Claire and he's like, yeah, I'll escape first. Then don't worry. No, we're all good. Don't do that. And it actually was kind of a good plan because, you know, Jamie could get out of there in about two seconds. Um, and then Jamie's like, Ian, Ian, go convince the council people about this. Go, get, go off and do that. Go, go, go. So he and, so Jamie and Claire have this scene where they're like, you know, Claire's like, you can't, you can't, you can't. And Jamie's like. Where there's all kinds of face touching. <laughs> and making out and, um, yeah, Jamie's, but I mean, again, Jamie's right. Like, it's kind of a brilliant move on his part. Unless they're going to beat him up like they beat up Roger, but I think Jamie can probably take care of himself. Jamie would have to, Jamie would probably have to go through the grease line too, but the grease line would be like. Jamie would be like, yeah, scoop of chocolate, scoop of vanilla, don't waste my time. You know, as Sir Sister Joe likes to say. Um, the grease line, that's a cultural thing that you're calling a grease line. Right. Um, so, okay. So, finally we hear the chief is like, yep, we accept your offer. Except, they're not really accepting his offer. Because... In the midst of all of this, our friend, we Ian, has used some mad bargaining skills. <laughs> and he's the one staying and not Jamie. Okay. We're going to break this down. Because out of the whole episode, this is where I was like, You guys, I try really hard not to be like, in the book, da, 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 da. But Do you have enough liquor because you should eat it? <laughs> Tracy, I have drank way too much. Let me, t is it have drunk? Have drank? Have um, drunk. You guys, I bought this yesterday. And I had one little glass last night. So I'm trying to like jam water in my pie hole because the last thing I need is to be loaded right now. Okay. <laughs> I felt like in this episode, and I'm not here to pick on anybody. Come on. We're all here because we love the show and we love the books. Let's just chill. There were two parts in the books where I lost it. And I lost it to my sister, Tracy, my big sis, who told me to read the books in the first place. One was when Claire went back through the stones and Jamie stayed and fought in Culloden. At the end of book Two. Two. And I was just a soup sandwich. I was like a mess. The second was at the end of drums when Ian stays with the Mohawk. My favorite blog post when I would critique the, um, critique the, the, my scenes, I would just read a certain, a couple chapters and then sit and which, by the way, you can find on myoutlanderpurgatory.com. Yes. We're going Carry back on. nine years ago when I did all this. Uh, I read this part, and I called Tracy, and I stood in my closet in my bedroom with the door closed and sobbed. And I, she would say, but Carol, he did it. And I would go, but they tattooed his face. I was a mess. Well, you have to tell dead. the non-book readers what happens in the books. The, this is my problem. And, and it's, and I'm not picking on anybody at the show. I understand the way shows work. You can't get it all in. You don't have enough time, whatever. But what I think that you didn't necessarily get across to the non book readers is that in the book, Ian kind of wants to stay. A part of him is devastated that he can't go back with Jamie and Claire and, you know, see his cousin Bree and meet the baby and live his life. And, but there's a little part of him that like kind of wants to stay. 
feels a kinship with these people, which is most likely because no, 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 that's not why. But and he and he did say that in the show. He does. He does. He eventually. You know, they tried. He, I mean, to, no, I mean, he's pretty, what he's pretty clear about me, it. But, but no, no, because his decision is based on, I'm not happy about this. I'm not happy about having my, my, my hand forced, but I'm going to stay partially because I want to be here. Like, I'm not like, yay, I'm going to stay. But he was like, these people intrigue me. These people, I feel like part of me feels like these people are my people. They understand me. I understand them. I'm going to stay. It makes way more sense for me to stay than for Uncle Jamie to stay. I'm going to stay. And I didn't get that from the show. I got a kid who was terrified and was like, oh, I'm going to stay. Like, I, I'll stay. You know what I mean? doing the right thing, but really I wish there had been more conversation. I just wish I'm always looking out for the people who didn't read the books mm -hmm. and, and I want be, you know why you guys, because the future of the show depends on them. Like it's all well and good to do things to make the, the book readers happy. But what about the percentage of people who didn't read the books? You know, my neighbor's like, I don't know. I wasn't really loving this. And my husband is really not loving this. He loved the first three, but now he's kind of like eh, falling asleep. I know you guys work really hard. I know the producers, I know they, they, they try so hard to remain true to the books. So I am not picking on anybody. I am not saying like, Oh, this sucks. I'm just saying there have been a lot of things over the years that I've gone, oh, well, they couldn't do it that way. But this, I wanted to see more of Ian's intrigue and Ian's, I'm going to stay because I've got it inside my soul mm -hmm. to stay. Mm -hmm. And I didn't see that. I saw a scared freaking kid that stayed because he saw Jamie and Claire shitting themselves and realized that for 20 years they were apart. And he was like, no, I'm going to do the right thing. It was more of, I'm going to do the right thing and stay. But he was terrified. And it wasn't until the grease line that he kind of said, okay, I, I'm good with this. I guess I kind of saw it a little more than you did. Um, and I don't know whether that's just because my knowledge as a book reader and my 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 knowledge of how it goes down in the books is pervading my thinking with the TV show. Um, but I will say this: that it would have behooved the show all of the times, probably like three different times this season. Um, it's been like, where's Ian? Oh, he's off with his Indian friends. You know, where's, oh, what, oh, Ian didn't come? No, he's going to meet us later. He, you know, sp spent the week, he went hunting with, like, the, you know, honestly don't even remember what tribe it is anymore, like, the Cherokee, whatever. You know, he went off hunting with them. And it might have behooved the show, even for, like, 15 seconds, to see Ian hanging with, like, being, be, you know, Rather than just hearing secondhand that Ian's like off having, you know, hanging with his, with his buds to see that. So that we're not told we're shown, we're, we're, we're shown it like it, it, and, and even that a little bit, because you do, they do, they do give you clues. I mean, he's clearly, he's very comfortable with the Mohawk language at the beginning um, but even in this episode, you know, maybe, maybe show him just a little more comfortable with the Mohawk people than Jamie and Claire are. Show him just a little more one of them than Jamie and Claire are. To, to, so that when he does come to this decision... To Carol's point, it's not just about like I'm I'm doing the right thing and I'm I'm keeping you know Uncle Jamie and Aunt Claire together. Um, 
that he's that it's more than that than it's that it's about like this is what I've chosen. This is this is the life I want to lead. I want to lead. I'm I'm not being forced to lead it. I want to lead this life. Right. 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 I'm choosing of my own accord. And that was the thing is that in the book that I hope you non book readers got, they were there for a while. It wasn't just they showed up, they got kicked out, and then they had the matrix fight. They were there for right, like weeks. Right. And Ian, Ian was sort of flitting about with the Indians and, and he, there was one, there was one Indian where he, you know, he quite, quite, was quite taken with her. And there was, there was a mutual respect there. Right. Right. Ian. Yes. Yes. That. Boom. Yes. Boom. Yes. You so just when hit Ian on it. Stayed, you hit on what was missing from the TV show. The a mutual, mutual respect. respect. Yes. Yes, and instead they made him do the grease line and threw shit at him until they realized, oh, he can take it. Well, and I get again, I guess it's because on the TV show on the screen they need you to see, they need you to see the, they need you to see it come to fruition. They need to see the light bulb go on off over his head. They need to see everybody, all of the Indians throwing stuff, whatever, whatever, punching can him, I, whatever. Can I interject something? And this is from the books, please. So. so- I, we should say also that, like, it's just, this is the scene that, remember a couple weeks ago when they had the Lord John Bree walk around scene? And I was like, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, they did an okay job, but it was never going to be as good as in the books as it was in the books to me. Mm-hmm. Because that was, like, one of my favorite scenes in the whole series. And, mm-hmm. I, and I just knew going in. I also knew going in that this scene was never going to be as good as it is in the books. In the books, they, like, like, you know, Jamie does that make, I, I think basically, so here's the thing. I think in the books, it's more very matter of fact to the Mohawk. The Mohawk are like, okay, we will give you Roger, but like, no, we're not taking your trinkets or your booze or whatever. Like <laughs> we believe in, you know, a fair trade. So we will give you Roger. You need to give us one of, one of your people. That's, that's the trade. Like a, a guy for a guy. Mm-hmm. And so that's where Jamie is like, obviously it's got to be me. I'll go. I'll escape as soon as I can. No worries, whatever. And you don't see where Ian is at that point, but I guess he makes the arrangements, whatever. But he, and, and I think that Jamie and Claire maybe are like in the hut or longhouse or wherever where Roger is. Ian comes in. Ian has already like made the transformation. Ian has had his face tattooed. Right. Ian has had his hair, you know, um, shaved off. So he's got just like, you know, a braid or whatever. Like he's, he's, he's gone through the transformation and Jamie is like, Oh my God. And Ian's like, this is what I'm doing. This is what I want to do. This is my choice. But the other difference, the other big, big difference. Okay. Rather than the grease line, what they do is a naming ceremony to Ian um, where yeah, he basically exactly. like gets rid of his old name and gets a new name. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. I totally forgot his Mohawk name. Oh, oh my God. I totally forget it. Um, but he gets a new name and it's almost like a baptism. And you know what? Jamie and Claire are there for that. They watch that. They, they, they're, they're supportive of that. You know, it's breaking their hearts, but there's no animosity or distrust, mistrust, mistrust, distrust, lack of trust. Um, you know, it, it, it's again to what Carol just said, which is the, just like a real, what is what was missing from the show and is really hard as a book reader to swallow is the mutual respect and the lack of that. Okay. And, and yes, and, and Ian, Ian, there was, there was an Indian girl that Ian was way into. Um, and that, you know, helped too. But, um, and, and, and if Jamie is going to walk away and leave his sister, Jenny's son with these people, he's got to be a little bit more comfortable with it. And in the book, it's upsetting, but there's a certain bit of you that's like, this okay. is right. This is, this is, yeah. He belongs there. Right, right. And in this? Right. right. But, but again, this is another one where I just knew that they weren't going to be able to get it the way that they, that the book did. Um, Why? It, it, 
because it's just, it's so subtle. You don't have time to build the relationship. You don't have time. And, and quite frankly, again, going back to Twilight, maybe it's boring. Maybe it's boring to see people like sort of mistrust each other, but sort of get along and sort of just talk and, and come to an agreement and not have a big like matrix fight. I don't know. Maybe it's just boring. I, I don't, I don't know. It's not boring in the book because you, as the reader, read it and kind of like give it your own interest, whatever. The show is the show. The book is the book. I will be very curious to know what non-book readers thought of this particular episode, of this particular like, like scene. Did you buy Ian's reasoning? Did you think it was weird? Did you buy that he would, he would think this way? That he would, that he would take this action, not just to save Uncle Jamie, but because it's what he wants to do. Like, have you, has his character in the show been developed that much in that direction that you bought that? I'm, I'm very curious to hear that. Yes, me too. And this is like, it's a testament to John, to John Bell that like, I, I bought it as much as I did, quite frankly. Um, and I will say that the scene between Ian and Jamie was, I thought, wonderful. I mean, I really, really, really did. But imagine the impact. Imagine the impact if they had had, had this, if they had been separated and if the decision had already been not just made but finalized and they had, the Mohawk had, like, already transformed him and Jamie see, seeing him, you know... But, but, but Sam Hewen and John Bell, that scene was just, was just so, yeah, slow golf clap for that. Um, it, it, it was, it was, it was really, it was really wonderful. Um, the, the closeness between the two of them, the sorrow between the two of them. Um, and Ian being like, no, I'm. Don't come get me tomorrow. Yes. Yeah, that was so great. That was so great. No, I don't want I don't want to be rescued. This is what I want. I guess but, but Carol and I think... both just said wish that there was more of a of a of a understanding of why he wanted that. Okay, so they couldn't have shown him for two seconds with some girl? I don't know. You guys, I, I don't when know. you're making your videos, do you ever put lipstick on in the middle of them? Uh, no, I don't. All right. We have to wrap this up because I'm getting hungry. Okay. So I, I just put it in capital letters. It's really hard to watch this part independent of the books. It's really hard. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. forgive mm -hmm. us people because this sequence in the books is just, is really great. And my favorite blog post ever. Yeah. That go I back ever and watch it. My and, and, I, and I called Tracy and I was like, everything she said, all I could say back was they tattooed his face. Yeah. Yeah. And let me tell you, once again, with the Mohawk, like, in the show, the, the face tattoos aren't scary to me. Right. In my mind, I mean, didn't he have triangles going all the way across? I think so, yeah. In, in, you know, this was like, nice little... I just, I, you know what, at the end of the day, in the books, it was kind of a, it was, even though it was, it was so painful for Jamie, and so hard for Jamie, it was a positive thing. And in the show... I don't know that it's as positive. It's more of like what must be done. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But again, let us know what you think. Well, I'm really curious to hear. I'm really curious. All right. We are moving on. We are moving out of the Mohawk. Uh, we are back at River Run. Jocasta and Marta are in the parlor. I guess they got over whatever the argument was at, at the dining room that they were having. They've My God, we're still there. I know. Marta's like, you know, Marta's talking about being a regulator and he's like, you know, Jocasta, you're not aware of what's going on in the towns. Um, in like the, you know, the little, like you're up here in River Run and your big mansion and you just don't know what, what, what the issues are. Um, and Jocasta, like th this conversation was very interesting. Jocasta's like, you know, you came to this new world for, for a new start, a new, you know, a new chapter in your life. And Marta's like, no, I didn't. I have a choice. This is it for me. 
So I think that gets across to her some. Well, because Mertz was like, but no, he was saying like, I can't, I, I was brought here. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't have a choice. Like you, like you, you did. This wasn't a new opportunity for me. This is what I was stuck with. Right. You know? Um, and he's really trying to push Joe Costa like over to, over to his side. And I love this because I was just, I just see this in the future being like delicious. Like Joe Costa <clears throat> is going to be some sort of a, like, you know, regulator, like, you know, uh, maven. Like she's she's going there. She's going there, and she's going to be some sort of spy. It's going to be really great. Um, so they have another big fight, and you know, all I can think of was like, this is totally the 18th century Sam and Diane from Cheers. You disgust me. I hate. You. Are you as turned on as I am? More. Because <laughs> <laughs> Bert is like, you know, bitch, Sam. and and Joe Chikos is like, you know you know, asshole. And Mark is like, eh, eh, eh. and the next scene is like, Jocasta being all like, and Mark is like, come back to bed. It was like, that was so awesome. I was like, I will. If she doesn't want to, I will. I was like, called it a year ago. Called it a year ago. And I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. 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 Oh my yeah. God. I it, it makes so much more this. sense. It totally makes sense. See, see you guys, see you guys. I'm totally complimenting the producers of the show. Yes. It makes way more sense for it to be Martha. This does not happen in the books. It's some other guy. Not that I'm not that I am giving any grief to Diana Gabaldon. It's so smart. It's so great. It's so great. It just makes sense. It makes sense. And and just Murta is just like hot. AF in this, oh in, my this God. in this scene. But Joe Costa, like Maria Doral Kennedy is just beautiful. There's like a scene, a shot where she's like standing and looking at the window or she's blind. So she's like, you know, just facing the window, I guess. Um, she's just gorgeous. Like, like really beautiful. Okay. Who are you telling girl? I watched her in the Tudors. I know, and and um, and the commitments too. Way back in the day, I have to watch that again. Oh um, my. Is this and the what, first time? And what? And what? And the what? Commitments. The commitments. The movie? Yeah. Because I ain't never, never, I ain't never, never, I ain't never, never, no, no, love the man for the way that I, I love. I went to see that in the theater with friends. I know. And I thought in the theater we too. may have smuggled in a little bit of contraband, aka alcohol. I saw it in the theater too. Was that great. was like twenty years ago. I know. I know. She's a singer, so she's a singer. Um, but she is this the first time we've seen Mircha in the bedroom? Bow, chick, bow, bow. I think it, we. I don't know. I think we may have seen him once with like oh, some the fr- one of his French girls, some bar wench or French girl or a. A prostitute. Um, now that you're think, now that you're saying it, maybe he did have some French girl. That's true. That's very true. But um, I love, I love it. I just love it so much. I don't even know what to do with myself. I just really love it. I love that they've known each other for almost fifty years. It's so so great. Are you even listening? Yes. Are you watching it? Yes. No. No. <laughs> fifty years. Yeah. Fifty years. Yeah. They really have. Like, they knew each other from Lolly Brock. They knew each other from, like, way, 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 way back in the day. Yeah. Not Lolly Brock. What's the name of the original castle? Leoch. Castle Leoch. 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 Okay. Yes. All right. Let's go back to the Mohawk. So, they've gotten Roger. Jamie's, like, you know, blah, 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 blah. And then Roger just clocks him. This is so great, too. Because <laughs> Jamie's like, yeah. Totally, like, you know, it's all good, bro. Just have at it. And Roger's it, like, you know, with one arm. <laughs> you know, I was mad at myself. Did that happen in the book? I don't know. I don't know. I was mad at myself because I was like, how could I not remember this? But that was seriously like, oh, my God. So I, great. I, I, I'm sorry, you guys, but those non-book readers, 
Roger's way tougher in the show than he ever was in the book. Yeah, Roger's, Roger, I mean, Roger's a professor. Like he, Roger's, like, kind of mild-mannered in yeah. the books, and, like, he's not meek, but he's mild-mannered, and he sort of like, goes with the flow and does whatever he has to do to get through a situation. In this, Roger's, like, <laughs> I know. Well, now he's like boom, boom, boom. But yeah. they start intercutting it with Ian running the gauntlet or going through the grease yeah. line, like yeah. whatever you want to say. Um, and Again, Ian is clearly you say grease line. It makes me mad. Ian is clearly better at the grease line than Roger ever was, because Ian is doing all sorts of matrixy things where he's like jumping over people and jumping under people. I'm and... sorry, but at one point they had the crouching tiger like legs going. <laughs> he was. Like, Wait, you guys. I have no shoes on. I'm probably gonna fall off this thing. Yeah, I can't even. Woo. <laughs> he, I, honest to God, he was just. But it was, was that was really like, great. I thought all that was I could really great. In my head was Mr. Anderson. I don't get it. The Matrix. I never saw the Matrix. I, I'll refer to it, but like only because I, you know, anytime you're like jump up in the air, slow motion, kick, go back down, like that's the Matrix. You've never seen the or, Matrix, or if you're wearing like a big long leather coat, the Matrix. Um. Um, I want to say Glenn Bogle, um, uh, Monarch of the Glen, um, um, The Quiet Man. You guys, make Tracy stay in for a weekend and watch these things, please. Watch The Quiet Man. Tracy, it's so wrong. <laughs> we watch it every, every, every St. Patrick's Day. Okay, so so they're cutting between Roger, one arm beating up Jamie, and Ian running the grease line. Ian runs the whole thing. He finally lands up on somebody's shoe. It's the chief. The chief is like, you're one of us now. Of course, he says it in English when there's like no native speakers at all around. But Right. Whatever. Whatevs. Because we're obviously too dumb to read subtitles. Okay, moving on. Oh, my God. Why moving can't we just have on. subtitles? Oh. It would not take you out of the scene if we just had some subtitles. Speaking of subtitles, I watched Roma last night. We watched Roma, which is um, nominated not only for Best Foreign Language Film, but Best Film. For my God, I thought you meant Rome. <laughs> no, Roma. Um, it's really lovely. You should watch it. It's a very lovely film. I totally will. Um, and it's on Netflix. So We're watching Netflix. A Discovery of Witches because I blogged about that. A Discovery of Purgatory. Um, so we are starting season four as soon as I, I mean, episode four as soon as I stop this video. Okay. So let's get to it. So Claire tells Roger the whole story about Bray, everything. She was attacked by Stephen Bunn. That seems so great. Rich, Richard Rankin is so great in this. He's so, 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 so good. <laughs> His reactions to all this shit, where it's like, you know, now, like, Bree wasn't, like, you know, sending Jamie to beat you up. Um, he did that all on his own, because he's a dumbass. Um, and um, she was attacked, she was raped by this guy that you would never in, in a million years ever know, Roger, Steve Monnet, and Steve Monnet. And right, Roger's like, Steve Monnet. Oh, my God. My God, it was so good. It was so 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 good so good and when he's like no i left because she told me to go <gasps> but he still came back for her and then he's just like yeah no i need some time I, like this is all just too much okay again i did as much as i didn't like that in the books because i kind of remember me blogging and being like ah. i really didn't like it in the show so like, maybe you need freaking time you could have gone home back a week ago however long ago it was when you had your hands and you're the stone and you stayed you stayed all these times you could have left and you didn't and now she gets raped she would shouldn't go off gallivanting and have some fun times with Stephen bonnet she got friggin raped and you're not gonna stay by her side what i was pissed i guess i see both ways i mean like so so yeah all that but, like, you've literally just spent, like, you know, six months with the Mohawk where you didn't know if you were going to, like, live or die. And this is all just, like, effed up and you just, like, need to, like, yes, calm down but, for a minute. Yes, but then you should have left then. Now you're going to leave because you heard that? It was gross. Gross. Yeah. 
I'm not going to fault Roger for anything at this point. You know what? Uh, oh, okay. She was raped because I walked away. And no, because she told him to go. He says it. She what? told oh, him to go. To and he came back. He you came back. Her. And what happened? Jamie beat him up. He came off. back a day later. He came back in the morning. No, he came back. Yeah, be, yeah because Stephen Bonner put his ass on the ship. You saw that. Damn but after that, after that, after that, he point, came back. He should have never left her. Look, he should have said, look. I know you're pissed off at me. I will go. But let me at least see you to wherever and not leave you in some stranger's barn. It's probably true. That's probably true. But, like, again, like, okay, then she throws something at him. Then what happens? Keep trying. I, I see. I see. his. I see. I see his point. I do. I see what you're talking about, too. It's very complicated. It's complicated. That's Roger's Facebook status. It's complicated. <laughs> it's his relationship status. <laughs> okay. So he's like, yeah, I need time. Jamie's like, make up your mind. And Claire's like, just take the time. Just be sure it's our daughter. It's our daughter. Um, so Ugh. we're back at River Run. Bree has the baby. Like, I've never had birthed a baby, but you have. Like, I thought that looked damn real to me. Like, that whole sequence of her birth. Bree did a great job. <laughs> and at one point, she's like this. I'm like, no, 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 don't go that way. Go back the other way. Because I tried that, and it didn't work. At some point during the birth, if it goes on long enough, and if you don't have any meds because your dumbass anesthesiologist keeps hooking you up to something that breaks. Yeah. Um. You at some point you're like, oh, they do it out in the in the fields and by the brook, and on their hands and knees. Maybe that'll be feel better. And you get on your hands and knees, and you're like, Jesus God, no, get me back, down my back. <laughs> um, and I liked how she had her hair back, like all these people uh, yeah. in movies who give birth with like their fully flowing locks. Oh, please. I'm just like. I'm sorry, but how can you do that? I'd be like, oh my God, get it off me. Get it off me right now. Tracy, we'll talk about this off camera. (laughs) I was get it off me with the whole thing. (laughs) I don't don't go out walking in 88 degree humidity in the sunshine, and I don't give birth (laughs) with tons of clothes on, okay? All right, so it's a boy... You know, they hand him over, and Bree's just smitten. And that whole thing was just lovely. It was very, very nice. That is actually very different from the book, because Jamie and Claire are back by that point. And you know, <clears throat> Claire, God forbid Claire does not deliver that kid. But in the TV show, it did not happen. Thank God for Phaedra. Thank God for Phaedra. Look, Love look Phaedra. She's so great. And Lizzie's there, too. Like, Lizzie was always hovering in the background in this episode, but, like, she was always there. Like, I forgot when Lizzie they- was there. It was Jocasta. Miss Phaedra, was Lizzie helping her give birth as well? I don't know, but when Lizzie came down those stairs, I was like, oh, yeah, Lizzie. I forgot about her. Okay, so it's two months later, and Bree's sitting with the baby and Murtaugh, and I'm sorry, that baby is adorable. And at one point, Murtaugh and Jamie are having a conversation, and I'm like, hot, 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 hot. And I'm so impressed. Sam Hewen is how old? 30-something? He's probably closer to 40, but all right, whatever. I'm like, go Murtaugh, because he's just as hot as Sam Hewen in this scene. I know. Mm-hmm. Well, then I think we're a little, you're a little ahead of yourself. Um, yeah, because that's <laughs> the part where, that's the part where. I thought we were ending. No, no, no. We still have a little ways to go. Um, so that baby is adorable. So there's riders coming down through Campbell's Field, and it's your mother. It's Claire. Yeah. So they arrive, and Bree's all like, and there's no Roger there. And you can just see her face fall. Right. So there's no name for the baby yet. She's waiting for Roger to name the baby. Um, I like that moment where Claire thanks Jocasta for taking care of her. Because remember Claire and Jocasta were a little like, ee. but I think Claire's on board the Jocasta train now. I think that was the whole like taking care of Brie was helped a lot. So then this is where um, Jamie and Marta like have their little discussion and Jamie's like on it and Marta's like oh, on it. <laughs> Jamie's like on it. On it. <laughs> um, so they both think he's dead. Do you think he's dead, audience? 
Heck no. I don't know. Come on, you didn't see him die, did you? He did get that key, but then he did blow up. So I. Uh, he oh, blew up real he good. He blew up real good. <laughs> so, okay. Um, so Clara and Brianna have a very nice little scene. And Clara's just like, I just want to bring you home to Fraser's Ridge. That's what we're going to do. All right. And then it's dinner. And they're all eating dinner. And Bri comes down to dinner. And, like, you know. Okay, and it's a big deal. Bree's down here. Yeah. Because she knew they were serving corn on the cob. <laughs> <laughs> And she likes corn on the cob because that corn on the cob looked really good. Yeah. Joe Costa, like, I just want to live at River Run and eat all the food. I'm sorry. It all looked really good. Um, and I can see also that Claire touched up her roots because there's, like, once again, no cray. <laughs> so did I. <laughs> that happens once a year. Um. So, okay, so they're preparing to go home, and they're packing up, and they're da 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 and Bree's, like, doing this and that, and she looks out the window, and she sees a rider, and she's like, I know who that is. And, and she takes off. Now, you know what? This is something that you and I would normally make fun of, like, to no end, which is, like, she's running, and he's riding, and then he gets off the horse, and they run to each other, and the big hug, like, that they do in every movie ever. And I have to say, I loved it. She was very believable. And I like that she was putting herself out there because Brie doesn't usually put herself out there. And she's like really running and just so excited to see him, which is the first time we've seen Brie really give a shit about <laughs> <Brock>. <laughs> Honest to God, <laughs> Bree's got this kid now, and she's like, "Oh, I need him." Oh crap! And you may Roger, not be that baby daddy, but I need a baby daddy. So yes, yes, and and this is the point where I wrote down on my little list that Roger looks like a Harlequin cover because <laughs> <laughs> he's got his <laughs> just like one breast to see hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like oh looking like Fabio. Oh and I have a capital letters. Oh my god, Roger's chest. <laughs> it was like there was <laughs> there were three people involved in this scene. <laughs> Bree, Roger, and Roger's chest. Oh my god. Oh my god. I feel like this I need to make this louder. Hold on. Did you break again? <laughs> His hair is all tumbling. That's just there. It's tumbling. <laughs> I was like, oh, are they going to do it right there in the field? <laughs> Part B, and same thing with me, Carol, the blogger, was like, okay, so you couldn't have given him the time of day before. But now that he's busy deciding whether he wants to bother with you and your child, now you're going to run off into the wilderness for him? <laughs> I was like, if there's any time to make a stand and be like, tough female, it's now. You'd be like, wait up, you bitch. <laughs> Believable, good for you, Sophie, because she's all <laughs> like Jenna Brady chasing after her glasses, and she's running, and she gets out there, and he's a Harlequin <laughs> with this. <laughs> I didn't understand it, but okay, I, I, I didn't. I never problem with it either. I bought it. You know what? Uh, Call yeah, me a I was sap. Like, Thank God Roger's back. We can all just take a chill pill. Call and... me the sap of 2019, but I bought it. I oh, really I bought it. did. I completely yeah. bought it. Um, I it wish is they had stereotypical AF. Well, <laughs> I know that would have been that would have made it even better if they were like <laughs> they should have put three in slow mo and put a Daggio for string. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh my god okay 
I have to, I have to put a pin in this conversation because I have to say, since you said it. So I did like, okay, last week's video. Oh my God, I peeing my pants. I so I'm so the second time in one video. <laughs> last week, you guys, we didn't really say much about that. And the reason was because we did like a 10 minute bit on that. <laughs> that I cut out of the video. Afraid of what you're all going to think. What I normally do is I edit these on Sunday mornings or Sunday afternoons after people have watched it on, on demand. So I'll go on like Diana's page and I'll go on like a bunch of other pages and I'll sort of read the room. And everyone was like, it's so effective. It's so great. The Adagio for strings over so that. She like censored the shit out of us. <laughs> and I was like, wow, people really like it that much. Oh. Okay. I'll cut the whole 10 minute. That's going to be a draw in our video. I'm telling you guys right now, because <laughs> we went off on that shit. And then I re thank God for our bud ginger of Outlander podcast. Ginger, you guys know Ginger on Summer. And I, I kind of knew in the back of my head, I was like, I think I thought at some point, like, Ginger's not going to be happy with that, with that choice of music. And Ginger went off, Ginger had the stones, Ginger had the stones to go off on it that I did not have. That I was too big of a wimp and I cut the I did. out of the video. <laughs> I totally had them. I cut, well, we both did at the but moment. But she edits everything I said. <laughs> <laughs> no, I went off on it too. And we, I mean, that was like the, when we watched that episode, the first thing Carol and I said on text was like a die show for strings. Oh my God. What the F? What the F? Like a mistake. Oh my God. Oh <laughs> but here's my the God. Deal. Here's the deal. I'm the first one to say, if you liked it, good for you. I'm happy that you got joy out of that. I'm happy that you liked it. I'm glad. That's okay. That's cool. I don't look down on you for liking it. If you liked it, then good for you. I didn't. You did. It's all cool. That's it just, why I don't believe in cutting out our opinions because opinions are opinions. I, I you know, I get, I, I think I'm like getting to the point where I kind of know if we say something, I just, I don't feel like dealing with the repercussions sometimes. And that was one of the ones that I felt like, you know what? I don't feel like, I don't, I don't, I don't feel like it. But, but trust me, it's good. Trust me. Like, the first time I watched that episode, the very first watch, I was already cutting clips of, you know, parodies, parody shows that have used that piece of music, like, to parody something. Like, I, uh, whatever. <clears throat> whatever, it's all good. But, yeah. So, I don't even know how we got... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no. All... Adagio for Strings was not played over this. Thank God. Although, it could have been because it did fulfill... No, if they had been running in slow motion, it could have. Because that's one of the rules of playing Adagio for Strings. Is that you have to be running in slow motion. Right. Right. Okay. So, okay. So, it, I mean, it is a great scene. Like, uh, you know, the, the two of them are... Like, I really bought that scene. I bought that whole scene. I really did. I really did. Yeah. I really but what did. do you think about the red coats? Weren't okay. you scared? So then the red coats are coming up, and I was, yeah, I was like, "What's this all about?" Oh my god! So they see inside the house. You know, red coats are coming. Jukasa's like, "Hide Marta! Hide Marta!" So they hide Marta. <clears throat> they're looking for James Fraser. James Fraser's like, "I'm James Fraser," and they're like, "Here's the letter from Governor Tryon. Bye." And I'm just like, "You wonder the taxes so are so high because like." You gotta have ten red coats riding to like deliver one dumb letter. Just one well, it's dumb. It's kind of like it's kind of like when there's a little smoke coming out of someone's house, and like every fire truck from ten towns around comes. It's kind of the same. But thing. like, but like, why was it necessary to have ten red coats other than to make us think that like this is the wrong problem? Um, Outlander shock value. Yeah, Outlander <laughs> shock value. Yes. <laughs> ASV. When you pay those, or OSV. When you pay those OSV taxes, Jamie, um, you'll know what they're about. Um, right. Okay. <clears throat> so the letter is from Governor Tryon. Jamie has been, uh, uh, you know, uh, asked, I guess, politely requested, <laughs> to um, put together a militia to fight the regulators. And the first task is to take out that 
head regulator, rabble rouser, merger festivities. Dun, dun, dun. <clears throat> Cut to black, season's over. What did you think of that as the cliffhanger? Lackluster? Underwhelming? Okay, here's what I thought. I thought it would be enough. I would have done it again. And this is another thing where it's like, show, don't tell. I thought it would be enough. Like, okay, they leave. Murta comes out of wherever his hidey hole is. Jamie opens the, the, the thingy and it just says, put together a militia to take out the regulators. He looks at Murta. Murta looks at him. They're both like, oh shit. Because they're inferring, as are we, the audience, that that means that Jamie is going to have to go against Marta. Season ending. But no. Audience is too stupid for that. So they need to tack on this thing of like, and your first task is to hunt down and kill that, you know, pest, rascally rabbit regulator Marta Fitzgibbons. I thought being that specific was not necessary because I'm, you know what? I and you and all of the Outlander people are smarter than that. We don't need, I would, we don't need like, you know, we don't need it. We don't need like them to take the Scottish beer bottle and, you know, bang, it, bang us over the head with it. The fact that Murta is a regulator and oh shit, if Jamie is going to have to fight them, there's going to be this conflict between them next season. I would That's have been okay thought. if the big, um, Cliffhanger would have been Bree looking out the window and seeing one lone rider coming and showing her face like, and then cutting to black. No, I wanted that resolved. I wanted, I want that all resolved. I want that all resolved. Um, I just don't know that Murtaugh being wanted is that much of a cliffhanger, but okay. Well, I don't know that it's a cliffhanger. I think it's sort of a, a direction that where season, it tells you where season five will go. How about if, if they had been like, Murtaugh, get in the hidey hole. And, and they knocked on the door like, oh, and they opened the door and they said, where's James Fraser? I think it would have been a little weird because why are you, like, there's no reason for him to be looked to, for anyone to be looking for him. What has he done? I just don't know that the audience cares that much about Murtaugh that they're going to be like, Oh, I think they do. We have to tune in, see what happens. Well, but it's Mur more than Murtaugh because, and again, that's the thing. That's why I don't want them to pinpoint him because they've, they've sort of set up all of this conflict. They've set up that Joe Costa will likely be supporting the regulator cause. They've set up that Fergus is going to be supporting the regulator cause. I mean, not like he's not going to be like Murta's second, but clearly he is, you know, working with the regulator guys. They've set up all of these regulators that we're starting to get to know a little bit. That would have been good too. If they had a little tiny blip of Fergus and Marsley at the Ridge. And, Quick little wait, hold on. They've set up, that, that whole other aspect of it, which is that Jamie knows, Jamie already knows that he's in a really difficult position where he has to be like, like supporting Tryon now, but switch over to the other side at some point because the You've other side is who's going to win. You've no, 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 this no, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm Carol, sorry. Wait, That's hold on, fine. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. He and Claire had this conversation earlier in the season. Claire was like, you, you know, you got, you got to be like, this, our side wins this time. So at some point, if you take, Tri that was part of taking Tryon's offer. If you take Tryon's offer, you have to figure out at some point, you're going to need to flip to the other side. And how are you going to do that? I understand that. I just don't know that it was interesting enough to, to be the cliffhanger. I guess I'm, I'm not needing like a massive cliffhanger. You're like a book reader. I'm constantly looking at this from the opinion of non-book readers to see if they're coming back next year. Oh, well, they're coming. They're already, we know they're coming back next year. They're already, they've got five Oh my God. Off. If the book readers, if the non-book readers are going to come back and watch, or if they're going to be like my neighbor and say, you know what? I'm kind of getting bored. Oh my God. This video is getting so long. Um, I don't know. You guys tell us in the comments. Is that is that like got you like riled up for the next season? Like I'm just a happen? big fan of. 
And I didn't feel like this was very, you know. And I liked it. I liked it. Were, were we at the gathering? <laughs> <laughs> and that's another reason I liked it. We didn't go to the gathering. We were we at the gathering. Yeah, you know, well, part of the gathering, too, is that the clock is ticking on the, on the whole hand fasting thing. Um, we've got nine months plus two months is 11 months. So we got one month to get Roger and Brie really married or, like, we're going to be, like, screwed here. Um, forward to that. I have a feeling we may not have a gathering. Lord, the gathering. Lord, the gathering. We may not right. have a gathering. It's, and on that note, it's time. Um, so what did you guys think of the ending? I, I, I liked it. I liked it. I thought I just, I didn't like the specificity of you got to get Murtai. I thought that was kind of a cheap shot a little bit. Um, like, are, it's, there's plenty of conflict there. You don't have to like pinpoint it at Murtai. I, okay, let me just throw my opinion. As much as I wasn't thrilled with that being the cliffhanger subject, I liked it. I was like, oh, here we go. Mm-hmm. 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 I like how it's like, you know, season five this way. There we go. And, and you know, I mean, Carol, the more into revolutionary war shit they get, the happier you are. Really. I mean, really. You know, the closer they get to meeting, you know, um, what's his name from Turn? Um, like Ben Talmadge and all those dudes. Did you meet Ben Talmadge? <laughs> <laughs> I well, meet George you Washington. You meet little so. John Andre or some Peggy Shippen, and I'm happy. <laughs> Do you know that Shippen house is still for sale in Philadelphia? Oh, oh somebody God. buy that for me. Oh. Do any of you guys have millions and millions of dollars to just throw around? Yeah. First, um, uh, sign up for the Mile Under Purgatory Scotland tour with some of that money. And then go buy the shipping house. Um, all right. It's only, it's only two point something mil. No big deal. Carol, I can't believe we're done for the season. Oh my God, you guys. I Do you guys want it. us to make more of these? And hey, listen, in the comments, write about what shows you guys watch and what you'd want to hear. Because sometimes we do these and we're like, oh, this is going to be good. And we talk about certain shows and we're like, that didn't have a lot of viewers. Tell us what you want us to talk about as far as like what shows you watch so that we can say, oh, I watch this. Tracy watches this, blah, 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 blah. Right now, Tracy, what are you watching? I'm watching A Discovery of Witches starting episode four, but there's only like 10 episodes from season from the first book from season one. I'm watching okay. Schitt's Creek. We're into the third season. Okay. And I will probably, after we've done that, um, do uh, season two of Maisel. This is Maisel. Oh, yeah, yeah. When's that starting? It already is. It's on already. Season two's on? Yeah. It's been are on you for like a, a couple of months. Are you positive? Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. They do season one ads all the time, and I go, oh, it's back. And then I'm like, oh, no, it's not it's back. It's back. It's back. Trust me. Not a couple months. Yeah. I think it's probably at least at least a month and a half. Yeah. 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 All right. Yes. Tell us what you'd like us to watch. Um... We are totally, there's going to totally, you guys, I have 16 months to like whiskey. And there is a video there. Somebody's going to learn, somebody I have learn me about le- learning how to like whiskey. It's going to happen. You know what, Tracy? Because you might the like Glenfinnich tour is part of our tour, you guys. You might like it better if, I'm sorry, I know you big time whiskey fans might be like, oh, hello. You might like it better if you just put a little water in it and just, you know, it's not quite okay. so harsh. Okay. All right. You know, you might like a, you might like a, um, um, <clears throat> a, a, a some people believe it or not are going to like a blend better than a single malt. I mean, you just, it just depends. You really need to go and have like a whis- whiskey tasting. Oh, that's good because I think we're gonna. <laughs> All right, you guys. Um, you guys, this season has been so great. You have been so great. Your comments are so fantastic. Um, we appreciate it so much. The love that you guys like get, give to us is just like makes us want to cry and you know drink more of this. Um, thank you so much this season. I think season four has been a really wonderful season. Um, to all involved. Fast golf clap because it's time for us to sign off. Yeah, this was a good season finale. You know, I, I was not so into the Mohawk stuff, but um, but all in all, 
sums up on the finale. This Thanks for putting up with my new thing of eating while we're making videos. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to be hearing from us a lot more. I'm going to have a lot in store about the, um, about the trip. You know, if this is just the first round of surprises, there's going to be more surprises um, to let you know about with this trip. Um, and uh, watch our space on Twitter, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, the website. MyOutlanderPurgatory.com that started it all. Yes. Um, it's going to be great, you guys. We're going to have such a great Droughtlander that we're going to be like, wait, drought, late. Outlander's coming back? Really? Because we're having so much fun in Droughtlander, we don't know what to do with ourselves. Okay. Time to agree. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, you guys. Have a great one. We will talk soon. We really, we promise, we promise, we promise. And we will see you soon. Bye.